Okay, in this video, we're going to look at a slightly more complicated example about describing a rate of change of a population and creating a mathematical model to describe this. So here, we're starting with an assumption that when a population is small, the growth rate of the population is proportional to the size of the population. But as the size of the population increases, limited resources cause the rate of growth to decrease. So we still have a rate of growth, but at a slower rate. Eventually, the population approaches a carrying capacity of the environment. So when we state our assumptions here, essentially what we've described here is our assumption for this model. Oh, I can't see that. <laughs> All right, so these are, yeah, so these are our assumptions. All right, and then we need to completely describe our variables. So as in the last video, we're going to have our independent variables, independent variables be time and whatever are the appropriate units and dependent variable is going to be the population in number of individuals. And we have some parameters to think about here. So in this case, we actually have another parameter that we didn't have in the last example. If a population is small, the growth rate of the population is proportional to size of the population. So we have that constant of proportionality. But then we have another parameter that's described here as p increases, limited resources cause the rate of growth to decrease, and eventually the population approaches a carrying capacity of the environment. So that carrying capacity would be what the environment can hold. I'm going to use the letter m to represent that here for perhaps a maximum, but this would be the carrying capacity of the environment. So we don't necessarily know what that is, but that's a parameter that's evident in this description here. And then we also are going to have at least some assumed initial population. To make sure that our model is actually reflecting reality, we would hopefully have some other data points too, some measurements taken at other points where we have other times and populations known that we could use to establish some of these constants. All right, we want to describe a model here. So we want to write an equation that describes this model. So in the last video, we looked at a rate of growth of a population that was proportional to the size of the population. So we looked at a model that was like this. And so basically what we want to do is modify that to have this other factor that talks about as the size of the population increases, the limited resources cause this rate of growth to decrease. So what I would like to do here is create a factor here that establishes that this rate will get smaller, that this rate, this dp dt, will get smaller when p gets closer to this value of m. And there are several ways to do that. One way to do that, though, is to think about some kind of factor here that we want to be small. We want this to be near 1. So that this is just dp dt equals kp when p is small, uh, near 1 when p is small. And then we want this factor to be even smaller, closer to 0, when p is larger, when p is close to m. Okay, so we can do that in a couple of different ways, but one way that we can do that is to use this factor here. 
Right, so when P is less than M, in fact, when P is zero or when P is a lot less than M, this fraction will be very small, and this factor will be approximately one. So when P is small, the rate of growth of the population is pretty much equal to Kp, minus this little factor here. And then when P gets closer and closer to M, this fraction gets closer and closer to one, and so one minus one minus something close to one, but always still a little bit less than one, will get closer and closer to zero. So that will cause this rate of growth to still be positive, still a positive rate of growth, but slowing. So this is a typical model for what we talk about here, where we have this carrying capacity and limited resources. We're gonna look at some of these models a little bit more in depth later in this course in chapter two, and so we'll talk about some more um, labels for this. We'll also look at solving this differential equation. At this point, I'm not going to write down an equation to solve it, but we'll look at some graphs, kind of a qualitative analysis, just based on the description of the situation. What we would expect is that when p is small, uh, at the beginning of this situation here, when p is small, you would expect that the rate of growth is similar to an exponential function curve. Remember that the solution to the exponential equation when this factor here was just one was an exponential equation. So we'd expect that graph to look like that, but you want the rate of growth then to slow, so the slope should still be positive but less, and then eventually the population levels out at some carrying capacity. So what you would expect to see is some sort of horizontal asymptote here for m, so that that population eventually levels out near that carrying capacity. So this is just kind of a description. It's not based on actually solving the equation. I could use some numerical methods. I would need numbers for k and m. I could try different numbers and see how the graph changes when I have different values for k and m. But overall, the shape of the graph should be like this, so that we eventually end up with this population leveling out near this carrying capacity of the environment. So we would then want to check that, make sure that makes sense with our initial knowledge of the situation, and check other data values. So if we were trying to describe the growth of some particular population, perhaps we have some measurements of the initial population and then some other data values perhaps, and we'd want to make sure that they actually fit with our mathematical model. And if the data doesn't fit our model, then we make some adjustments, perhaps to our parameters. Maybe we had faulty assumptions about what the carrying capacity actually was. And we make adjustments and we regenerate a new model with better data. So that's the basic idea here is that all these models, predictive models about infectious disease spread, weather, economic forecasting models, all kinds of different forecasting models that you're going to be looking at are basically using the same idea where you've got this description, you've got a, a solution, and then you check that to make sure it makes sense with the situation and perhaps reiterate the process with better data.